You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 199, 199 episodes, oh my gosh, of Teach Better Talk. Y'all are crazy if you're still listening. Anyway, my name is Ray Hewart, and as always, I am with my dynamo friend, Jeff Gargas. Hi, Jeff Gargas. <laughs> Hi, dynamo, huh? I like well, that. You know, we, a we little, have a little cool foreshadowing little, into the, the episode. Yeah, cool little soccer talk that we're going to get into a little later. But um, before we do any of that, I do just want our listeners to know, Jeff and I always start with bantering. You guys know that we're just going to goof off for the next few minutes. But this episode's so good that if you're completely deterred by us, just hit that little, like, go ahead 30 seconds thing and get straight to the episode. <laughs> Stop telling people to skip us. Look, the, you definitely want to listen to the whole episode because, it one, yes, it's an awesome episode. But also the, the Dynamo reference was to a pretty cool giveaway uh, that we do toward the end of it, too. So you got to pay attention to that. But don't skip us, please. Like, we want to we want to be here with I'm you. I'm not saying they should it's skip cool. us. I'm just saying that our loyal, loyal <laughs> listeners who have listened to 199 episodes do know how, the, how to use a fast forward button. I'm just saying. That's true. That's true. Well, I, I'd have to, I'd have to uh, argue that the the true loyal fans listen to all of this nonsense because that's what they love, Ray. All right. Well, I just want to say sorry, Mark Heller. We know you skip this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we know Mark skips it. So, yeah. um, I want to do real quick. I do want to get into this episode. I want to bring something up. A, a tweet that. I know you retweeted out, and it comes from one of our good friends. Uh, I'm going to bring it up on my phone here. Uh, Brian Zwimke tweeted out. When, did, when was this? Uh, the, other, the other day, yesterday, I think it was. Uh, he, he tweeted out this tweet, and I want to I want to read it to you, and then get your. I just want to have your thoughts on it, Ray. From there, uh, a good reminder to educators: whether you are in person, hybrid, or remote, they they are called instructional practices, not instructional perfections. So and I good. thought that at this point in time, when so many people are getting ready to get back in their classroom, whether virtual, hybrid, in person, whatever it might be, so many teachers either are either already back, going back this week, or going back within the next couple of weeks. And there's a lot of emotion going on. There's a lot of um, worry going on, a lot of anxiety. And I think that's so important to understand that you don't have to be perfect. Yeah, I've heard a lot of that from the phone calls that I've been taking recently from educators preparing for the classroom. I know a lot of us are starting back with our school districts, whether it be, you know, a full week of professional development or more, or you're actually getting some time with your students finally after all this time away. So many educators have been talking about, Ray, how do I do this? I just want to figure everything out. I want to be perfect. I want to give everything I can to my students. And I think that as educators, we're putting a lot of pressure on ourselves to even during this completely uncertain time in the world, we want to be perfect. And while that is so admirable, and I I want to celebrate all the educators that are hunting tirelessly to find the right strategies with the right combination of resources and instructional practices and everything in between to be successful, we also need to give ourselves a little grace. Like things change so quick and your passion to want to do well is something that we want to continue to celebrate and foster and give you support on. However, on those days when you're doing something, it doesn't go well, like give yourself a little grace. Every single moment in your classroom does not need to be perfect. If you're doing it with the right intention, then everything's going to work out fine. And I do want to add a little caveat. If you are focusing so much on instructional practices, don't allow that to take away from all the other things you should be focusing on in your classroom. Like, building relationships with students and communication to stakeholders and making sure that you're being an advocate for your students and also supporting your leadership who's making really hard decisions right now. So as you continue to look at those instructional practices, I love how Brian said that, don't allow them to be instructional perfections. Nobody is perfect and we are all on our own journey to grow and be better right? What's our motto? Every single day, a little bit better than I was today and a little bit better than I was tomorrow. I mean, it's really, really important that we continue to have this idea of growth. So we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Deep breaths. <laughs> Love it. Shout out to Mr. Brian Zwimke for that awesome quote there. Actually, uh, let's talk about uh, this Jeff, episode. 
Jeff, what? I think it's it's Dr. Brian Zwemke now, just so you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Dr. Brian Zwemke. I'm just I'm saying so it's sorry, a Dr. big accomplishment. I don't know. <laughs> it is true. It is true. I, I, I am absolutely okay with calling and him we Dr. We have Zwemke. another doctor that was on our podcast. Which, I know. That was your good segue. <laughs> yeah, so we have Dr. Akua Tomasi with us in... I, I'm going to spill the beans now. We talk about it later, but the fact that this was her first podcast appearance ever is just unreal to me. I still don't believe her. She was so good, such a natural, uh, just a ton of experience and, and uh, just value and passion uh, and competitiveness during the uh, six questions. So a lot of fun uh, with her. She's been a uh, high school science teacher. She's been an assistant principal. She's been a coach. She's an athlete. She is currently the regional athletic director. Uh, she's got some really cool things going on. And I just had a blast chat with her and learning about her. her uh, I thought her story, her failure story was just um, unreal. It was just so good. Uh, and there's a couple, I have so many notes written down of little quotes, little things she said that just like hit me that I just, I'm so excited for everyone to listen to this episode. Ray, anything you want to add into that? I am a huge fan. No, I always say this, right? Like, make sure you're staying connected. We just mentioned two incredible educators, three if you count, if you count like crazy Mark Heller, amazing educators that have to be in your PLN. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but do really take the time to not only be a, a consumer of knowledge, but participate by connecting with these people. So let's get started. I loved this episode and I can't wait to listen to it twice. All right, let's get into episode 199 with Akua Tumasi. All right, we'll be right back with that episode, but I do want to make sure that you know that you should be listening to all the podcasts, a part of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Yes, Teach Better Talk is a fun one, and we really appreciate that you have subscribed and hopefully rated and reviewed this podcast. But we also have other podcasts that we have the opportunity to highlight over in our podcast network. Head over to teachbetter.com slash podcast to see the full list. All right, we are here. We are chatting with Akua Tomasi. And oh my gosh, it's so much fun talking with you so far. I wish we would have hit record earlier because we've been laughing and having a good time and uh, just getting to know each other a little bit before we hit record. So super excited to have you on the show. Excited to kind of dive in, get to know you, learn about your story and 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 uh, just chat with you more but before we go too far into it how are you feeling right now well jeff i am feeling pretty good i'm excited to be here with you all um like you said completely 100 percent enjoyed our banter before um we started recording so i'm really super excited um to move forward no cool i'm so glad you're here it's gonna be so much fun i've already been stalking like crazy on social media and i along with i'm sure all of our listeners cannot wait to hear your story and just everything that's going to come out of this amazing podcast. The most important, of course, being that you already admitted that your team Ray, which made Jeff feel like the third wheel, which was perfect. <laughs> uh, and we grew up in similar areas. So I just cannot wait to see all the things that we have in common, but also uh, a lot that we're going to learn from each other before we get too far in. Cause I know we got to chat before we started recording. I want to make sure our listeners kind of hear all about you. So we kind of start with that very general question that's hard to answer of, you know, describing what you do. So if somebody asked you what you do, how would you best describe yourself? <laughs> Correct. Very, very hard. Um, but Ray, I am by title, the regional athletic director for KIPP Texas Public Schools in Houston. Um, but that is just the title. Um, I serve um, in underserviced areas, helping students, scholar athletes, their families, um, to kind of navigate uh, this athletic process and all that it is, um, just acquiring skills, um, the recruitment process, um, and choosing the place that is perfect for them to go for their post-secondary education, um, and everything in between, leadership, uh, building grit and character, and all that fun stuff. Um, I like to say that I'm just an advocate um, for the students. So whatever it is that they may need, um, and their families included, I think that's a really big part of um, a student's success. I'm there for it. Um, always down for the cause. Um, I definitely feel that this is my my life work. So, um, what I do is so much more than just the title. It's definitely uh, getting down and dirty and trying to figure out how we can make all of our students successful, regardless of where their um, original talents lay. Mm, I love that. And how long have you been in that role? Because I know you've also you've been a, you were a science teacher. You've been an assistant principal. You've had quite a few different roles in in education. How long have you been in this particular this this title right now? 
So fun fact. Um, I got this job in February and then a couple oh. weeks later, COVID happened. And oh, geez. So yeah, that, puts, that, I, um, that makes your, your start of your job a little difficult, huh? Right. So learning a new role, um, I've aspired to, to be in an athletic director role for, for quite some time, but learning a new role, learning a new organization and learning how to live in a pandemic has been 2020 for me. So it's definitely been interesting. Mm. And so I got to assume so the dream was to be athletic director. Where what what sport was yours when you do you currently play a sport? Did you play a sport all through you know your childhood and stuff? What was that? What's your go to? Absolutely. So my first sport is soccer. Um, my dad was my first coach for several years, um, and I don't know if that was a positive or negative. I'm still trying to figure that out. But um, uh, that is a sport I played for all of my life. We'll definitely step out right now and go play a game of soccer. Um, so close to my heart. But um, all of the sports I love. Uh, basketball, volleyball, football. Um, I, I think I'm a little over competitive. Um, and so I like uh, any any type of challenge. Um, so definitely have a, a heart for all of the sports. Love Jeff, it. you we know just... that we have a good guest on when she talks about soccer. Cause you and I, <laughs> I just said we have two soccer, soccer fans here. So. <laughs> yep. It's good stuff. So all right, let's talk. So, you know, one of the things we always talk about on this podcast is uh, failure. I always say that I've been fortunate enough to fail a lot in my life because I feel like it's taught me what I need to know to be where I am right now. So can you share a story with us about a time that you've had a failure in, in your life and how you had to overcome that? And then what did you take away from that experience? Absolutely. Um, well, before there was 2020, there was 2012. And 2012 was <laughs> exceptionally um, real for me, I a recent grad in my first job and a lot of things started to kind of fall apart and collapse around me, including um, job wise, um, financial um, relationship, right? So everything that I had known coming out of college where you're like, I know everything, I'm an, I'm an adult, it's all together, was kind of falling apart. And um, at the end of that year, one of my students was shot and killed in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and then I'm just driving, minding my business. Um, life is just really not fun right now. Um, and like the engine literally falls out of my little Toyota Scion. And so, um, sobbing, I call my dad and I'm like, listen, I don't know what to do, but this, none of this is working. Um, and and that's how I ended up here in Houston, actually. Um, my dad was like, well, we'll put your life back together essentially, but you have to come closer to the family. And they had moved down here while my sister was in college, because for some reason she decided to go to UT. So um, they were here in Texas and I, I joined um, and started to build um, my life back and the things that I thought were to be true, married with kids by 25 and um, all of those things. I'm, I'm a big shot at my job because I'm just so brilliant and everybody wants to know me and talk to me um, and all of those things, uh, just trying to find myself um, w- was where I was at. And so um, I, I started to live um, more humbly, number one, but also I started to reflect on what it is what is it that you really want? And so you've had this dream of being an educator for years, but what does that mean? And why do you want to do that? And so I, I spent a lot of time processing that, um, working odd jobs that were not in education, um, kind of passing the time and resetting up my life. And what I took from that is that um, your purpose is is ingrained. It's set in you. Um, and, and you have to stay true to it. And and you have to, to work work actually work towards it, right? It doesn't just show up. It doesn't just come. You're not automatically going to be good at something because that's what you want to do. And so um, just making sure that all of the decisions that I made were in line with my goals and my passion and what I wanted to do next. Um, and then also having the humility to, to listen to those older than me, not just in my, my parents, but also my mentors who um, were trying to look after me as to what um, kind of like the, the cheat codes of life, you know, I, you know, that's an age where we think we just know everything. Um, and we haven't figured it out. We survived four years on our own and now we haven't figured it out. Um, and so it was just a really, um, humbling time in my life, but it just taught me, um, that you can learn anything, um, from anyone. And that if you align your life, uh, your actions with your goals, you'll see a lot of, a lot of progress. Um, and where you want to be. And then just to just stay true to yourself and stay true to um, the fire that burns inside of you. And so um, <laughs> it was a, a, a tough year, but um, come 2013, I started a, a, a wonderful, wonderful um, 
excursion in Houston, Texas, that has been very, very promising and fruitful thus far. And and so other than the heat, I think I can say I like it here. <laughs> Well, I love that story. I love that you can learn anything from anyone in your life, and just the the whole the whole idea of, of staying true to your to yourself, staying true to your purpose, and, and really reflecting and figure out what that true purpose is. I love that. So let's let's flip that around now. Let's talk about a successful moment you had. It's gonna be something big, something small, but tell us what happened. Why was it a success for you? Then what'd you take away from that experience? Awesome. Um, so when I was in Aldi and I was an assistant principal at MacArthur Senior High School, um, I oversaw the athletics departments, the science departments, and a couple other areas and, and teachers. But um, athletics is, is super close to my heart. And, and I was hearing a lot of conversation about how our female student athletes were this or that or not competitive enough or not into it and um, and all of these kind of complaints. And so I thought, what can we do? What do they need? And, and I've always been a big proponent of um, finding people or things that can motivate you and, and inspire you consistently. Um, and so I have what I, I had what I call a shower dream, you know, where you have all your best thoughts um, in the shower. But by the time you get out, you're like, okay, life is starting. I need my coffee. I got to get to work. And then you get to work and all these things happen and you kind of forget. Um, but I thought of what would it be like if we had um, an event that could empower young female athletes um, to work harder, to um, give them the opportunity to see others that sat in their shoes and what their post-secondary uh, athletic pursuit look like um, and just to let them know that there was there's something more um, to being an athlete just than just going around and and kicking a ball or, or shooting hoops it, it's a development um, as a leader as a team player and also somebody who that that gets to understand how important skill acquisition is if you can learn to do x y and z on the field or on the court you can learn to do x y and z in life um, and so I thought in my brain, I said, what if we have this event, we bring in guest speakers, we have panel members, um, that went to their school and I just built this whole vision. Um, and then the first year started and there were all of these, um, roadblocks and technological issues and all of these things that were very, very rough and took away from the original message that as women and student athletes, we can empower one another to achieve academic and athletic excellence. Um, but in my last year in, in Aldean, it had turned into a district wide event where I had a group of young girls called the girls athletic leadership committee. Um, and they led events in their schools, um, bringing, uh, student athletes together, supporting all types of UIL competitions, including band, choir, one act play, um, and building culture and community in their schools, but also, um, setting up this culminating event at the end of the year where we had guest speakers in the last year we had, um, the first daughter of Houston, Ashley P. Turner, um, give a charge of excellence. And she just talked about um, being about uh, your business and focusing on what you want um, and letting distractions like social media and boys um, go. And then we had other guest speakers that just talked about their journey and how um, they gave everything they had to athletics. But at the end of the day, that's not it. And all of these characteristics and traits that you need to be successful um, we also brought back a panel of previous MacArthur graduates that talked about what it was like to play ball in college. And so um, all of these kids got to see uh, people who were just in their shoes doing things that they thought were impossible. Um, and so it, it was just super fun and super inspiring. Um, and this little shower dream turned into an event that impacted um, hundreds of kids, you know, packed out an auditorium of 700 kids, coaches, um, school principals, um, and just building the community. And the biggest thing I think that um, I got and loved about it was the difference, um, not necessarily the difference, but knowing uh, when it's time to compete and when it's time to collaborate. And I think that finding time to comp collaborate with those people that you would normally compete with doesn't make you um, not aggressive or competitive enough. It makes you smart enough to to know that people have things and know things that that you might want to acquire, um, and that people are people and they, and they need to be supported um, and loved and encouraged. And so um, we were able to use that tool to build community and draw the the young women in our district together, um, but also light a fire between young athletes to use their sport as a mechanism to move forward. Um, and so that is one of my. Um, biggest successes. And if there is a day or a time where I can draw that out to the city of Houston or anywhere, I would, I would love to, because, um, that experience and the feedback I got, uh, was life-changing. 
Oh, absolutely. A massive success. That is a huge deal. And I'm loving your story so far. You have done so much for not only, you know, obviously the, the different roles you've had, but I love your mission and the work that you've done with students because holy cow, is that an important area? When I have to say though, like with everything you've done, obviously you've had a lot of different experiences in education as a whole, but what really is keeping you excited about education and all the work that you're doing? Um, well, I think that's twofold. Um, for me, uh, education was, um, and school and all of those things, the ability to um, learn was like a saving grace. It was the one area that I knew that I could work at um, and, and find success. It was the one area that I knew that um, the, the playing field per se was, was level. Um, and so I want that experience for anyone who is doubting themselves or um, really not getting the full experience out of school and education. I want them to be able to know that, you know, these are all the things that it offers and I want to be an advocate for those kids um, in marginalized areas. But also, um, I think right now, something that's super exciting to me is the opportunity for school and athletics and community to kind of rewrite the narrative for this nation and everything that we're going through right now. Um, sport has always been a place where people can come together um, and just bond. And I think there's so much strength and I'm just loving so much um, the way that some of the professional sports are leading the charge um, in supporting one another and supporting the causes um, that we have right now and just being vocal with their platform. And so um, I just think that it, when we draw that down to schools and communities, we have ways to bring people together, despite all the things that we might disagree on, um, that, that will remind us of what, uh, pre-COVID life was about. Right. Um, and so I'm just, you know, the, that charge to, to bring, um, academic and athletic excellence to every student who wishes it. Um, and then also navigate uh, the change that's going on in this world is what's keeping me going because um, it is certainly not just a cup of coffee. <laughs> no, I totally, totally understand that. And that's such an interesting, uh, I don't know that we've ever had an answer like that on the podcast ever before. I mean, this many episodes in, I, I love that that approach, that mindset, and this this idea that we're really a part of a special time in education where we, you know, have people sharing their voices so we can enact change. I think that is incredibly important. Yeah, and yes, a cup of coffee is absolutely not the only thing doing the trick these days. We need much, much more. Um, <laughs> when it comes to advice, right? Like I'm confident that you like dish out great advice all the time, but when it comes to advice for whether it be a new teacher or a veteran teacher, you know, I, I think that we're all kind of first year teachers all over again, no matter what um, role that we're Absolutely. in right now, it is unprecedented times, but, um, what type of advice would you give an educator right now? Um, so absolutely. So my, one of my mentors, Dr. Jimmy Doc told me a long time ago, um, to protect the passion. And I think that is, I actually been repeating it nonstop, um, through the summer of learning and all this work that we've been doing, because with everything going on, we can get so bogged down. Um, the first, first year especially is so difficult as a teacher um, and then continuing to to change and and refine your craft through years one through three is is also equally difficult but I think if we protect the passion um, and and remember why we started in the first place we can survive you know anything including the first year um, in the classroom during a, a global pandemic right I think that you just have to know yourself and, and know what drives you um, and protect that at all costs because there's plenty of things that will, will get us down or discouraged. Um, you know, even just all of the conversations that are, are going back and forth uh, with education and are we starting all virtual or do we have to be in the classroom and all of that back and forth, right? That's enough to make anyone tired. Um, but we have to remember why we do it and why we're here. Um, and so she said that a long time ago um, and I am holding on to that uh, even to this day. Oh, I love that. Protect the passion. That is so good. Uh, that's, I, I wrote that down. That's staying on there. Uh, I love it. So let's, let's, let's have some fun here. Actually, before we go into the, the six questions, you wanted to do something fun today and do a little bit of giveaway. So what, let's, let's tell everyone, what do we got? What do you want to do some giveaways with? 
Awesome. So um, Kip Texas, Texas Public Schools has been able to forge an awesome partnership with Soccer Starts at Home and um, Houston Dynamo. The author of the book, Tom Beyer, um, has established that uh, learning um, and skill acquisition happens much younger than we thought. And so we're integrating this, this program into Kip Texas Public Schools to help kids um, essentially learn how they learn and build um, those connections from brain to foot that will strengthen all the other connections while they're in the classroom. And so um, on behalf of my fun friends at the Houston Dynamo and Dash, we'll go ahead and give away a Dynamo hat and t-shirt for our listeners today. All right. So we need them to, so, so we need them to to tweet something out. You got to make sure you, you tag everyone here. Uh, that you hashtag teach better talk hashtag teach better and then make sure you tag the Houston I mean Houston Dynamo I think that's got to be important right absolutely uh, and we'll keep an eye out for that and that's awesome so that that's like so unique too a lot of times it's books which are always great and really really cool this is a hat and a, and a t-shirt we're gonna give out uh, for the Dynamo so you know what you don't even have to like the Dynamo I think it still works but I'd love to hear <laughs> in your tweet like if that's your team or not. Um, you know, those of you who know Ray know she's a Chicago Fire fan. So, you know, you I, know. I do have my favorite teams. But like I said before we started recording, I would totally go to a Dynamo game in a heart, yeah. <laughs> heartbeat. So that's what that is. That is awesome. That's a really cool connection there. All right. Let's let's keep having some fun here. We're going to do the next six questions. And your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. You ready? Okay. Shy Town talks fast. So I'll, we'll see. It's like a competition. I told you I was competitive. All right, here we go. What is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Um, everything Google Classroom, and then also Blown Assignments, which is a software that measures student achievement metrics. Uh, what's a book you're reading right now? I'm actually reading three books: Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, Dreams for My Father, Barack Obama, Barack Obama, and then Start with Why by Simon Sinek. Uh, who do we need to follow on uh, social media today? Um. My mentor, Dr. Latanya Goffney, um, at Dr. Goffney, D-R-G-O-F-F-N-E-Y, um, and Coach Ola Adams, uh, at Coach O-L-A Adams. Um, he is the defensive coordinator um, at Villanova, and they're both super inspirational um, and fun and, and heavily rooted in education. Uh, give us a good YouTube channel or website for educators. Um, I love TED Ed, which is, you know, the education TED Talks that is like, can listen to that all day, every day. And then for my coaches, always got to look at for my coaches, P.E. Joe. Um, and he has been clutch in the virtual physical education world. Uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Um, self-care. Hashtag self-care um, and staying active and moving about in this world that we're, we're sedentary quite a bit now. Um, and then reading. Reading for leisure or reading for um, for professional growth. And what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? My doctoral cohort sister told me, run my race. And so for anybody else, mm. I would say run your race. Mm. I, I love, love that. that wow. Ray, trophy. Oh, my God. There's no doubt she's trophy. getting the trophy. With how competitive she is. And she's a soccer <laughs> fan. And she's team Ray. And hello, her answers were awesome. There is no <laughs> question. You are getting the Teach Better Talk trophy for sure. Jeff is going to package that all up and get that all sent over to you. <laughs> Lovely. Hey, Jeff, don't forget to do your job and send that over to her. I'm on, I'm on it. I'm on <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, great. It's going to arrive super soon. So if you don't get it, make sure that you just text Jeff over and over and over and over. <laughs> saying, yeah. Copy I that. Think, yeah, I think Robert Breyer messages him about once an hour just to remind him that he hasn't gotten his yet. Yeah, Robert's. <laughs> Rob's still waiting for it. It got caught up in yeah. the mail somewhere. But it's different. <laughs> You'll get yours. So make sure you bother Jeff for that. That's awesome. Um, no, honestly, I have loved hearing your perspectives, learning more about you. I am so eager to have all of our listeners stay connected to you and continue to follow all the work that you're doing. Would you mind sharing with our network kind of how they can stay connected? Maybe your Twitter, Instagram handles and things like that. Absolutely. So on Twitter, it's Dr. A.P. Tomasi. So at D-R-A-P-T-W-U-M-A-S-I. Um, and then on Instagram, it's at A-P Tomasi. So A-P-T-W-U-M-A-S-I. Awesome. And you can find, you know, you can find all the links and all the resources and everything we mentioned in this episode over at teachbetter.com. 
as well as those really important links for connecting with Akua and keeping this conversation going with her. Uh, so make sure you head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us that rating and review, we'd really, really appreciate that as well. And let's take this one step further. Just think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these uh, amazing educators and share this podcast with them. We really appreciate that. Uh, Akira, this was just such a great episode. Um, I'm going to call you out that you were nervous to come on here, and I just don't understand why because you were so good. I I felt like you were just a pro. You had, I mean, just you were just golden. I just love this. So much value in this episode. So awesome. I'm really glad that you, uh, you know, you took me up on offer. You came on and you hung out with us. And I hope that this is the first of many, many conversations that we continue to have. But thanks for taking some time and just hanging out with us. Thank you. Absolutely, Jeff and Ray, you guys made it easy. Thank you so much. Um, this was actually fun because <laughs> I was definitely nervous and dreading it, but this was a blast. And so thank you so much. Awesome. And until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better. Mm-hmm.